Hi, um, welcome to the shed. So today we're going to continue with our lead goddess uh, project, but this time we're going to be building a solar fountain. So um, if you watched the uh, original video, which of course you did, um, you might remember the lead goddess that we made, one of these. Yeah, the idea is that we're going to make a plaque with um, the lead goddess coming through the middle um, and a water fountain coming out of her mouth. So that's what we're going to attempt. The mould is a lot more difficult this time. It's not straight. I've got to actually build some uh, some beading, some kind of pattern. That's going to be a laugh. Um, so the first thing to do is going to be get the proportions correct. Yeah, so I've got some quarter inch ply, which is nice and easy to cut. Uh, we've got to make it extremely square. I have got a table saw, so I should be able to do that. Um, yeah, and then I've got to find some way of cutting this to shape to go through here. Not sure if you can see that. Um, so that it sits tightly. I'm going to use some kind of, I don't know, plaster of Paris or plasticine to kind of seal it. Um, and then I've got some balsa wood. Hold on a moment. I have some balsa wood which uh, these dowels are going to be around the edges, hopefully, something like that will give me my raised edges. And then I've got some uh, thinner wood, which, to be honest, I thought I was ordering, I, thought I was expecting a box about this big. That's what I got, 20 sheets of one mil. So that's going to be a laugh doing that as well. Um, I'm not very good at artwork, no patience, so I might have to uh, get somebody else to help me with that bit. But yeah, we'll give it a go. Okay, first thing to do is get this board cut up nice and square and try and get our uh, proportions correct. The proportions are going to be really important, so let's try and do that now. Cheers. Okay, so I've built myself a cross-cut sled for my, uh, for my uh, bench saw, what's it called? Table saw. Um, yes, yeah, that allows you to get a very, very accurate angle on here. So I'm going to cut it slightly over and then bring it back down to size. Needs to be square though. So prepare for noise. Okay, that's the first cut done. So now I can use that edge as a square so that I know that I am in line all the way around. I'm just going to take a little bit off each side. Okay, I warned you it was noisy. So now we've got a perfectly square piece of wood, as in square corners, not square, uh, equal sides. Okay, so now we're gonna try and line it up and see what happens. It's an amazing bit of kit, the table saw, but it is a bit scary to use. I don't really feel particularly comfortable with it, but anyway, just have to make sure you're very, very careful. If you buy an expensive one, it has something that uh, can detect if it touches flesh and stops immediately. And they, they demonstrate it using a uh, frankfurter. As soon as the frankfurter touches the blade, the blade stops. Pretty cool, but I can't afford one of those. Also, my mate who runs a frankfurter cutting business says it's absolutely useless. Anyway. Okay, so that's the... Uh, I think that's quite almost the proportions. I think pretty much there. Uh, let's just get my measure. Stick that there. Height wise, I think it needs to come down a little bit. Want it to be too small, don't want it to be too big.
Okay, I'll get that cut down to size. I'm not going to show you that bit because it's frankly a bit noisy and probably doesn't make very good TV. Okay, so I've cut that out. I actually went slightly bigger. I just felt like I needed a bit more room for decoration. Let's take the edge off those. Stop me getting a splitter. Okay, so now I have to work out a way of cutting that out. So I guess I'll square it off draw around it but it's actually tapered so that's not going to be easy is it hmm I think I'll have to start small and just work my way out Obviously a hundred plus year old lead plaque is not going to be square. Okay, it's pretty much centered now. Okay, let's get this over to the bandsaw. Probably not going to be able to hear me while this is going, so we're going to start with a cut through the actual outside of the mould and just try and take out as much as I can without going too close to the edge. Uh, and then we'll match it up and see what happens. Okay, so um, I've cut out the rough outline. The bandsaw, <coughs> excuse me, bit of dust there. Uh, the bandsaw's getting a bit tired and it's got a bit of flexibility in the blade. Actually, I just realized I should have probably dropped that down a bit. Such an amateur, but anyway, okay. Okay, so that's the rough outline cut. We'll give, us, give that a go and see if that fits in a minute. I realized I should have uh, dropped this part of the bandsaw to give it a bit more strength because it was flexing on the blade, but you know. You live and learn. Okay, so there's my mould. It's not going to fit straight off. But the idea is I can probably find out where I need to take some off. Actually, it's not far off, really. So I'll take a little bit more off here. Probably could just use a file or a rasp to do this. But I will use the bandsaw. Cool. 
give that a go. Okay, so I have made it fit. A little bit of gappage going on down the sides there, but I can't really avoid that because the thing is just not square. So I'll fill that when we uh, when we've completed the rest of the mold. So the next step is to add a thickener. So some thicker wood, maybe maybe the same wood. I don't know. Need it to be about 10 mil thick, so um, so that the pipe. So that the pipe that I'm using, something like this, uh, this thickness, which is 10 mil, uh, will be able to hide in there. So it needs to be at least 10 mil. So yes, yeah, so that needs to be at least 10 mil, so that I can embed that pipe in there. This isn't the actual pipe. This is more likely to be the spout itself. Cool. So um, I've got a piece of pipe something like this we're going to be using which will come through the back of the uh, the lead and spout some water so I've got to make sure that uh, the thickness of my plaque is at least 10 mil so that that is hidden or partially hidden um, yeah as long as it's not not showing from the front I think that's okay so that's the next bit stick a backing on this to strengthen it up okay so we're all clamped up I'm gonna leave that for a few hours uh, that gives us a thickness just over 10 mil. Uh, yeah, tidy that up with a bit of sandpaper. Fit it to the lead, and then we also we've got to do the beading on it. Yeah, that's going to be a, a lot of fun. Okay, so I've completed the frame. That's nice and stiff now. It's got the right correct thickness. Uh, I just need to smooth off the edges. And for that, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, sandpaper. This is. 1500 grit, but I'll get you way too, too fine. Let's see what I've got. A couple of floats, a couple of these. See, I know all the woodworking tricks, me. You would think. There we go. And then I'll just. Uh, Give that a nice. I really do need a decent working bench. But this is all I've got at the moment. I might give it a slight chamfer. So you get the basic idea. These will be the edges of the mould, so they do need to be straight, otherwise I'll get lines in my mould. So uh, I fitted a couple of spacers, or four spacers, just to raise that up to the correct level. So uh, on order is some modelling clay, which I'm going to use to fill these edges here. And also to help me create my designs. So next step is to put some beading around the edges. And for that, I have these dowels, which are balsa wood. I think these are six millimeter. They're probably a little bit small. Should have gone for eight millimeter. Anyway, we'll use what we've got. I'm gonna cut these on the bandsaw down the middle. And that will be my beading around the edges. So I'm going to go over to the bandsaw now and uh, show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got a sort of a fence that I made for my bandsaw. I'm going to move that up to halfway through this. Well, actually slightly, slightly off halfway because I want it to, the blade will take out a little bit. I think, believe they call that the kerf. So that's in place. That's good. And then I use a straight edge on the other side just to hold it in position. Okay, so let's give it this a go. Probably won't be able to hear anything else once this is going. I've got to try and push it through straight, but I think I'll be okay. Too tight, can't push it anywhere. Still too 
website. What's going on here? couple of uh, just under half width or half semicircles whatever you call them do a few more of those with the rest of this and then we'll be good to go okay so I've set up a sort of uh, 45 degree fence here not exactly accurate but it will do the job just about and it's probably going to cut through the square as well so I'm probably end up doing it by hand but here we go Do the job. Or it would if I'd cut it at the right angle. I've now got two parallel ends, not as intended. Change of plan, it's balsa wood. I can cut it with a knife. There you go. I was over complicating things. It's a habit of mine. Let the sun go down. Okay, once I've done those and glued those in position, I will show you. Not sure if you want to see my face, but you probably should. Yes, yeah, so once I've glued those in position, I will come back to you. So it's going to be like that. I'll have to give this a good coat of uh, varnish to try and seal it all up otherwise it's just going to fall apart in the mold okay so that's the uh, well finished I'm not particularly good at cutting mite joints but once I uh, get some pressure on these just to line them up those will look okay and then we'll use some modeling clay to fill up any gaps and give it a bit of a, a smoother look probably won't be able to sand it too much because it's balsa wood and it will disappear okay that's it for the moment Okay, so the glue has set on these borders. I've given it a bit of a sand up, but I don't want to go too far over because that is, blow, um, is balsa wood, so I'll end up sanding it away. I've also cut a little bit extra in here because I noticed this wasn't quite square, so I can now square it up. Um, I've got some uh, modeling clay on order, which I'm gonna to use to complete the seal around that. And then we need to build a frame around that for the mold to be poured into. So that'll be the next step, and that's going to be in the next video. So, okay, so I've finished the uh, frame now, the glue is all set. I've given it a little bit of a sand on the edges, so we're almost ready. I don't want to go over the top until it's had some lacquer on it, because this is balsa wood, and it'll probably just disappear if I sand it too much. So um, I've also added a bit of extra space around here so that I can uh, uh, align it correctly. Um, I won't show you that now, but there's basically some modeling clay on order. That's going to make the seal around the uh, frame and the lead, and then we need to make a. I don't know if you can see that. Yes, you can. So yeah, so around here will be modelling clay, um, and then I've got to make a, a frame to go around this to actually pour the uh, silicon into. So that'll be in the next video. That concludes this one. Thanks very much. Uh, I haven't bothered to change into my outro shirt today because yeah, can't be bothered. I hope you like this bit of graffiti. This is my son when he was about, I don't know, 11. He's now 30 nearly. Crazy. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, do all of that stuff. Thanks a lot. See you on the next one.